Discontent is simmering across Nigeria as organized labor unions will be launching nationwide protests today. The demonstrations target the rise of the recent rise in electricity tariffs and the government's decision to remove subsidies from the power sector. The protests are expected to disrupt operations at key locations, including the headquarters of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission in Abuja, the Ministry of Power and State Offices of Electricity Distribution Companies. The controversy stems from a decision announced in early April by the NERC. The regulatory body significantly raised electricity tariffs for customers or for customers in Band A, a category that enjoys at least 20 hours of daily power supply. These consumers now face a staggering 240% uh, increase with their rates jumping from 68 naira per kilowatt hour to 225 naira. This change effectively eliminates subsidies for Band A customers who represent roughly 15% of Nigeria's total electricity users. The move has sparked outrage with many Nigerians already struggling with rising cost of living. To discuss this further, I'm joined by a public affairs commentator, Dotun Ojon. Hello, Dotun. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. It's good to be here. All right. Beyond the recent electricity tariff hikes, uh, are there any underlying uh, factors contributing to the public's discontent that could fuel these protests? Um, it's actually not a good time for majority of our people in Nigeria because um, it's been a one year of burden uh, of nothing of their own. Um, it's just that uh, majority of people were birthed into this season of subsidy. And the government cannot come on board within one year and remove all the subsidies. And these are very, very critical areas. Our entire lives in Nigeria are tied to petrol and electricity. If you ask me, I see why a lot of people actually complain about how much um, a liter of oil has been sold today. It's simply because of the fact that the majority of all that infrastructure are actually not working. For instance, if um, you have um, a, a, a good um, uh, transport system, you will not bother about how, you will not bother more about how much they sell for it because, of course, you may not need to drive. So, I, I think these are majority of the issues that are actually foiling this. And now when you come up to say, oh, we are actually taking off subsidy uh, in electricity, targeting band A, majority of Nigerians, because of the distrust they also have in their government, know that it's actually a way of creeping into all the bands you may actually say today that you are going to just increase band A, but look at the percentage. You read it, about 240% increase because you actually want to take out subsidy. And I tell you that any community, any country, any society without power supply is as good as dead when it comes to um, uh, economic development. Yeah, Dutton, but, but what are the possible concessions that the government could offer to appease the protesters, you know, without jeopardizing its uh, economic reforms? They have, made, they have made their request, and the request is, is, is um, clear. They are talking about reversal. And reversal is actually understandable. Let's have conversation before decision. One of the reasons why democracy is different from all other forms of um, government is because conversations always precede decision. You can't just wake up and say we're taking out electricity without engaging major stakeholders. My concern is this. If you really want to build your economy, do not have the mindset that more money will do that for you. And it's so satanic and, um, and sad that at every point in time, people think that oh, the more money we have, the, the better it is for our people. No, we have gone, you can go back into history. Let's look at two or three countries that have actually uh, developed economically. You will see their major attention. What are their attentions? Number one is that they pay a special attention to medium and small scale entrepreneurs. Most of the things that you are importing today are things that um, some of these guys can pull, pull off in Aba, in Lagos, in Oshodi. But if you do not empower them, they are not going to be able to do anything. And how do you want to empower them? By making electricity available. And I've said it again and again, you cannot be fighting these two wars together. The first war of electricity and that of fuel. Because if you look at the percentage of Nigerians actually connected to the national grid, we are about 12 million people from 200 million people. 
it shows that their mainstay has actually been fuel. So you cannot take subsidy from fuel and take subsidy from electricity at the same time. It All right. means uh, that you are going to suffocate Dutton? them. You actually did say that, you know, it's not uh, about money, but uh, paying attention to the people themselves. But uh, can you explain to us further how this situation reflects the broader challenges, you know, of balancing economic development with social welfare in okay. our country? Yeah, uh, I, I must make it very clear that social welfareism is national development in itself. Because when you talk about security, when you secure the welfare of the people, it extends to security of your nation. You and I, we agree that, uh, you will agree with me, I mean to say, that um, once there's no security, the economy is challenged. So the first thing you should be able to pay attention to is the livelihood of your people. Because anything that challenges the livelihood of your people will stunt your economic growth. So it's not even a contest. It's a clear um, mathematical equation, that anybody, economic equation that anybody can see. So the point I am making is that beyond the big organizations that we clamor for, we must respect the place of small and uh, small scale entrepreneur. And small scale entrepreneurs are not going to develop if you make them to go through the hardship of not being able to power their generator, if you make them to go through the hardship of not being able to have electricity, if you make them go, um, go through the hardship of having to pay through their nose for power that is going to, by extension, lead to production. And I say it, you remember when the, um, when the founder of Facebook came to Nigeria, he said that he was working on the street of Lagos, and he granted an interview that he has never seen an energetic nation like Nigeria. What does that mean? It means that the age group, the, the, the most uh, populous age group in Nigeria is the energetic age group. People between the ages of adolescence and, 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 and adulthood. What do you need to do for these people? All you need, they, already, they are already creative people. What you need is to make the infrastructure available for them. And I must, I must tell you that we are making the required money since subsidy on fuel has been removed. What do I mean? There are states now that take as high as 20% more than what they've ever taken as their allocation from Abuja. What have they done with it? So the problem is not making more money. We already have <coughs> the money. If we do not control access to the money we have in public places, it's going to lead to further corruption. So we shouldn't further burden the people by taking out this um, 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 electricity subsidy mm. owing to the advice of somebody that is not here, that is not resident here, that does not know the peculiarity of the Nigerian state, that does not know that people have to struggle before they breathe, before they eat, before they move. We shouldn't take their advice. We should look at our own economic reality, look at our potential, work towards developing it as a nation, rather than thinking that more money will kill our misery. All right, Dutton, right now, as far as we're aware, uh, the issue of uh, minimum wage is still, you know, dragging. They've not uh, come to a conclusion yet. But then, uh, what do you think are the potential long-term implications of, you know, these protests for the Nigerian government's relationship with the labor unions and also the public? The, the, the problem will be the same because um, there's been um, mutual distrust between the, the, the both of them. There's never been a time, because if you really trust your government, and I keep saying it, that one major thing that the Nigerian government, and it doesn't have to do with uh, uh, President Mo um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, even the government before him, is actually, do your people trust you? The people do not trust their government because the government has the, um, the track record of entry into agreement with labor without fulfilling it. You remember the issue of ASU. We've been going back and forth since 2009. And up to today, the agreement that was signed has not been totally executed. So I think it will further polarize the, the fence that they are trying to make. And it will create more room for uh, mistrust between them. I, I come to think about it, if you trust that your government, whatever it's doing, is for your own good. There will not be any need for you to hit the street. And if they hit the street today, there's going to be major losses for government because anything that hamper with free flow of government activities will actually hamper productivity. And anything that disturbs productivity by extension will actually affect development. So we are going back to where we are coming from. Um, years of protest, years of strike, years of um, misunderstanding between, between government and labor. And I think this government needs to do more in procuring 
public trust, in making the labor to believe that whatever it says is actually going to do it, in making the um, labor to have the mindset that the government is for the Nigerian people. But on this electricity tariff, uh, we may say it's starting with uh, Band A today, but before you know it, the fear is that it will just extend to other, all other band users without them knowing. Mm. It is unacceptable that as a productive person, I'll be having four hours of electricity per day. No nation can develop. And we must know that a nation of 200 million people needs about 50,000 megawatt of electricity to be able to give people reasonable light for development. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dotun, for uh, joining us and speaking to us on this. It's always a pleasure.